But what if we could love the way Jesus did? Passionately, faithfully, powerfully. What if the way we love could make a difference in the world around us? What if that love looked at everyone the way God does? A love which doesn't see the past, but is consumed by a desire to see people come to know Jesus. A love which is patient and kind, not envious or prideful. A love which puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. A love which protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Do we love like this? Do we love like Jesus? Maybe it's time to ask a simple question. How can we love better? Well, that is a good question. How can we love better? And the Apostle Paul, writing to Timothy, talks about something that... uh, Um, reminds us that we need to learn to love better. And uh, Paul is talking to Timothy in chapter 5 and verses 1 through 16 about helping the church family. And uh, what a great way to help the church family is by showing love one for another. And um, he's going to show us in this text uh, um, several ways that we can meet the needs of folks in our church and love them and help them uh, in life's journey. So... Before we dig into the word of the Lord, let's go to God in prayer today. Uh, Father, thank you for the opportunity to be able to lift our voice before you and to be able to give you praise and honor and glory. We ask that, Father, as we humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord, looking to what uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, we're reminded that, Lord, we have a great responsibility as church members uh, to treat one another in such a way that we show the love of Christ that we meet needs when we see them, that we help when there is a, a, a time of need. But yet, Father, we, we are reminded that, uh, Lord, uh, um, the church is not there for um, folks to take advantage of, but yet to uh, use to share the love of Jesus Christ so the gospel message will be proclaimed throughout the land. Help us, O oh Lord, Father, to... Uh, I look to your word and hear from Paul what he has to say about how we are to uh, treat one another, help one another, and Lord, how we can uh, um, share the love of Jesus Christ as we do it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Paul uh, gives Timothy some instructions to help him uh, minister to certain groups and different groups uh, uh, with different needs within the church. Um, Young Timothy uh, perhaps uh, had never experienced uh, all of this before, and so Paul is advising him as he goes through uh, his ministry. Uh, These verses reveal how that uh, um, even our church today should respond to various groups within our church. Uh, Paul begins with general needs, and then he moves into more specific needs. Uh, But uh, uh, the first principle that we find in meeting the needs in our church family is that we need to understand that uh, um, God has uh, shared with us that uh, we have a responsibility. Now, what is that responsibility? First and foremost, uh, he says in verses 1 and 2, treat everyone like family. Oh, how important it is uh, to be treated like family. There are specific ways in which we are to treat others according to their gender and, oh, and uh, their age. Um, so let's go to uh, 1 Timothy, and uh, we're going to look at verses uh, 1 through 16 as we dig into God's Word this, mor- or this evening. All right, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 1 through 16. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. The older women as mother, the younger as sister with all purity. Honor widows uh, that are widows indeed. But if any widow has children or nephews, let him learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. 
for that is good and acceptable before God. Now she that is a widow indeed and, and, and desolate trusteth in God and continued in, in supplications and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give ch in charge that they may be blameless. But if any provide not for his own, and specifically for those of his own house, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Let not the, a widow be taken into the number under threescore years, old having been the wife of one man, well reported of her uh, for good works, if she has brought up children, if she has lodged strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has relieved the afflicted, if she has uh, diligently followed every good work. But the younger widow refused, for they have been begun to wax wax uh, wanton against Christ. They will marry, having damnation because they cast off their first faith. And with all they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house, and uh, not only idle, but tattlers also busybodies speaking things which they ought not. I will therefore that younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. For some are already turned aside after Satan. If any man or woman that believeth that uh, uh, believeth have widows, let him them relieve them, and let not the church be charged. It may relieve them that are widows indeed. All right, so the Apostle Paul reminds us that there are different genders and there are different uh, age groups in which we are to respond to. So we're to treat everyone like family. Uh, so the Apostle Paul starts off and he says that uh, in order to treat folks like family, this requires remembering that a church is a family and everyone should be treated like a loving family. Paul begins by reminding Timothy uh, as a young man, um, he tells him, rebuke not elders, but entreat him, them as a father. I remember many, many years ago as a young minister myself, uh, looking out over the congregation and seeing so many gray hairs and, and being reminded that I was a, just a young um, preacher boy and these folks were m much my senior and I had to treat them with that respect uh, that they deserved. Younger men are never to harshly reprimand an older man nor speak to him in a condescending manner. When there is a disagreement with an older man, the tone that the younger man should take is to be loving and respectful. Paul also writes that elder women are to be treated as mothers. Again, not speaking harshly, not speaking rudely, not speaking crudely to them, but in loving manner as we would speak to our mother. Paul practiced what he preached. And in Romans chapter 16 and verse 13, this is how Paul looked at Rufus's mother. He said of her that she had been like a mother to him as well. Older men and women in our church are to be treated like fathers and mothers with respect. And now uh, we think about that and where do we get that idea from? It comes from the very fact that in the, the commandments, uh, the fifth commandment that God has given unto all of us in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12 is to honor thy father and thy mother. Now, listen, that, that talks about a, a, a child to their parents, but in Paul is bringing to mind that if uh, we're looking at the elderly in our family, our church family, they are like our mothers and fathers, and therefore they should and receive the same honor. All right, the word honor means to treat with high regard or great respect. Now, Paul goes on to instruct Timothy to treat younger men as brethren. Uh, in regard to men of his own age, Timothy was not to use his God-given uh, pastor role uh, to act superior over them, but instead he was to treat them like brethren. 
Now this means that they can be confronted more directly than an older man, but they should always be admonished uh, gently and lovingly like a family member. Uh, and then he goes on in verse 2 and reminds us how should we treat younger women in the church. Uh, as a minister and as uh, uh, church members, how should we look at the younger ladies in, uh, in our church? And Paul goes on to say, treat them like sisters with all purity. Now, this means to treat a young woman uh, with the same per- protective manner and chastity that we would our own flesh and blood sister. Um, When men see younger women in the church, we should see them as sisters, younger sisters in Christ, therefore treating them with all the absolute uh, um, purity and respect of our younger sisters. Um, We need to meet the needs within our church as looking at it as they are family members that need us to help. So uh, Paul goes on in verses 3 through 10 to tell us how to target that groups of people. Target the needs, first of all, he says, of the older women, all right, the older widows. In the church, there are people with specific special needs that should be met just as we would take care of our own family needs. Paul writes, honor widows that are widows indeed. Now, that seems kind of silly. If you're a widow, you must be a widow indeed. No, Paul has a specific way in which he's going to share with us what makes a widow a widow that should be cared for by the church. God has special interest in helping and being helpful to uh, the widows and the orphans or the fatherless. God has always uh, looked out for them and, and always encouraged his people to do the same thing. He gives us a warning all the way back in Exodus chapter 22 in verse 22. And it says that we are never to take advantage of or to afflict any widow or fatherless child. God looked upon these as special care packages. And he looked upon these as people that we needed to look out for and care for along life's journey. Now, Paul continues and he says, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite their parents. This simply means that um, children have a responsibility to their parents to take care of them in their older age. This is what is good and acceptable before the Lord. Um, As children, we were cared for by our parents when they were younger. And as they grow older, we are to care for our parents and look out for them. Those who are truly widows are desolate in the world and and, and in trust in God. Now, remember, in in Paul's day, widows were treated and and there were um, a different outlook upon them at that point. They didn't have a pension plan. Um, They didn't draw Social Security. Uh, They didn't have a means of income. A widow, when losing her husband, may even not only lose their income, but but they may lose the farm. Uh, They may, uh, that farm may be given over to someone else, and therefore they are totally desolate. And all that they have is their dependence upon God and His Word that promises that He will provide for the widows and the orphans. So they, he goes on to say that uh, widows that uh, pray through the night and day making supplications, which means asking God for help, these are those that, that uh, God is going to hear and, and the church must respond to. However, if a widow liveth in pleasure, he says, she is dead while uh, she liveth. This means that if she lives only for the pleasures of life, um, uh, the wantonness living, and never considers uh, the spiritual things of life, she is spiritually dead. She is not a child of God. Paul tells Timothy to command these things to the church so that widows will be blameless and have a good reputation in the community. 
Now, Paul is telling Timothy, these are the things that you are to teach the church. Teach the, uh, the men how to treat older men. Teach the, the young women how to treat older women. How that you should look upon younger women and younger men as brothers and sisters. And how you should re- respond to widows. Next, Paul gives a stern warning here. And I want you to hear this because I think that in, in our society today that we need to hear how important this is. And Paul says, if any believer, if any believer does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his own household, he, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Not taking care of the general needs, the genuine needs of of relatives and immediate family members is a serious sin before the Lord because even the unbelievers cared for their parents. And he says, listen, what an outcry this is and what a, a demeaning reputation it is to the church and to the teaching of the church if we don't take care of our own. Listen, my friends, I believe that Paul is admonishing us even today that we have a responsibility to take care of the folks within our own congregation. uh, If God tells us that the older people of our congregation are like father and mother, then I have a responsibility as a son to help them to meet their needs. It is my job and your job to look out for those within our congregation. Because I believe the world looks in from the outside and looks upon how that we care one for another and, and, and says, well, we can care for our family better than they do. It should never be so. And Paul gives such a stern warning. He says that we are worse than the unbelievers when we do not do what we are supposed to do. Therefore, believers who fail in this area have denied the faith, he says. Wow. And and he says that we're worse than unbelievers because they show less compassion and love than even the unbelievers of this world do. Now, again, Paul wants to be careful that he doesn't just open the portals of the church and say, pour out all of your resources on everybody. But this is what he says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 10. He says that uh, uh, for those who are able, those that are able body and have opportunity but refuse to support themselves, he goes on to remind us if anyone would not work that can work, neither should he eat. In other words, If they're able to work and the work is available, but yet they refuse standing around with their hands out, Paul says the church should not give those handouts. For the widow to be placed on the official church list for constant help from the church, for lifelong help from the church, she must meet two requirements that the Apostle Paul says. First of all, she must be three score years of age. Now that means she must be 60 years old or older. Um, that in those days, 60 year olds were considered unmarriable because they were beyond childbearing years and, and, and they couldn't uh, uh, produce that for uh, uh, the family as, as um, a childbearing woman would. And so they were unlikely to be able to remarry at that point. But then he goes on to say that she must uh, have been a wife of one man. Now, this doesn't exclude women who, who their husbands perhaps died when they were young and they remarried and then their husbands died again and now they're a widow again. It's not talking about those who married more than once. Rather, it means that she must have been a one man woman. You remember when we talked about the qualifications of a pastor and a deacon? And we talked about the one woman man, meaning that she was to be a a faithful wife to her husband. Uh, She must also have been known in the community for her good works. This means that she was uh, she brought up uh, her children and and she helped strangers along the way. She uh, served in the church, you know. 
Uh, one of the wonderful things that I have experienced over the years in my ministry is our widows. And uh, one of the things that I have been able to uh, see happen over and over again is how widows get uh, involved in church ministry. And uh, they do a wonderful job um, to, to be a, a part of the work of the church. Um, and, and I have been blessed over the years to, uh, in, to be involved with many widows who have um, done great ministries. And even in our church today, we have several of our widow ladies um, that are, are faithful servants and, and workers in the house of God. They just long for and look for opportunities to serve the Lord. And that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about here, is a lady that, uh, if she is able, is she willing to serve the Lord? Um, this means that she um, is, is able and willing to follow the, the leadership of the Spirit so that she might be an uh, effective minister in the house of God. All right, so meet the needs within the church. We need to treat everyone like family. The elder as fathers, the younger as brother, the, and mother and, and sister. And then we're to look to the care of our older widows. And then the Apostle Paul teaches here in verses 11 through 16, what are we to do with the younger widows? What about those young ladies that, that for whatever reason lose a spouse? The Apostle Paul says, teach the young widows how to support themselves or to remarry. And now the Apostle Paul has some instructions here and, and, and um, don't uh, take it wrong. Paul's addressing the situation of his day, but there are some applicable uh, things to our day as well. So what about those ladies that are under the age of 60? Paul writes, but the younger widows refuse. Now, listen, he doesn't mean don't help them at all. In other words, he's saying you help them get on their feet, but do not uh, make this a lifelong ministry with them. This doesn't mean that there's not a relief for temporary assistance, but they won't be put on the permanent widow's list. If they are still young enough to work, they should go out and try to learn a trade, he says, uh, to be like the virtuous woman in Proverbs chapter 31, uh, who perceived that her merchandise is good and her candles goeth not out by night. Meaning she was a worker, a laborer. She put forth an effort to, to provide for herself and for her family. And then he goes on to say that uh, in verse 24, that she makes linens and garments and sells them and delivers belts to the merchants. Is there a means in which she can provide for herself, a way that she can continue to uh, provide so that she doesn't have to depend upon the, the, the gifts of the church? So younger widows are to support themselves. And then the Apostle Paul says that um, the other option would be for them to uh, remarry but, uh, uh, so that they don't become permanent uh, widow status on the church list. If a younger widow, he says, doesn't remarry a believer or choose to support herself, her passions can be drawn away from Christ. And, and the Apostle Paul is, is warning here in verse 11, and, and, and I want you to kind of see, but the younger widow refused, for when they had begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. Now, Paul is, is talking about here that, um, you know, if uh, uh, they don't marry or a believer, um, they're, they're able, able to be drawn away into the world. And Paul goes on to say that if they marry an unbeliever, they will be drawn away from the faith that they had in Christ and they will be drawn away into the world. And look at verse 12. He goes on to say that having that damnation because they have cast off their first faith. Now what he's talking about, he's saying uh, they, they left the faith. They, they left the church behind because they married a non-believer. Um, the word faith here 
translates a pledge, meaning that they made a pledge um, e either to not marry and to continue to serve the Lord uh, as servant of the Lord. Now, here's a good example. If you go to Luke chapter 2 and verse 36 through 38, we, we hear of a widow that, who done just this in Luke chapter 2, and her name was Anna. She was a prophetess who spent her time day and night in the temple praying for the people and serving the people there in the temple. Now, Anna was a great, uh, great example of what this means to make a pledge to serve the Lord and not remarry. Um, and Anna gives us that example so that these widows, these young ladies, had one of two choices. They could commit their life to Christ solely uh, so that they would serve the Lord. But Paul says, be warned. That as you make that pledge and, 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 and things begin to deteriorate and you um, decide to take a husband just for the sake of a husband, it can take you away from your faith. All right? So he goes on to say uh, in verse 14, younger widows must give the, the adversary no opportunity to slander their life. In other words, we know that the devil is always looking for something to tell the world. See, I told you that those people called Christians aren't really what they claim to be. I told you they're nothing more than hypocrites. I told you that you couldn't trust what they say. You see, we as Christians need to be careful. We have an adversary who is, is always looking for our weaknesses to slander us before the world. We must be careful that we live a life so that the adversary has nothing to use against us. It refers to that eternal condemnation of a true believer. All right? So we need to remember that our gift of salvation is by grace and therefore does not depend upon our works. But we need to live our lives in such a way that God is honored and the adversary has nothing to, to accuse us of. Paul explains that young widows uh, who do not remarry or go to work will learn. And he goes on to say that, um, you know, idle hands are the devil's handiwork. You know, we've all heard that saying. Well, and maybe that's what Paul's saying here in verse 13. And he goes on, he says, They learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers and busybodies. You know, uh, the Apostle Paul says that when we don't have a purpose in life, we don't have things to do, we have nothing else to do but to tell stories or share things that we've heard. We know what that's called, don't we, folks? We call that gossip today. And oh, how that we share gossip. And, and even as Christians, we like to use uh, the, the spiritual gospel uh, uh, to, to share gossip. I'm, I'm just telling you so you'll know how to pray for them. I want you to know how to share the gospel with them. You got to know what their, their sin is so that, that you'll know how to share the gospel. Listen, my friends, we don't need uh, the spiritual gossip to share the gospel. We just need to share the gospel. Um, so the Apostle Paul is saying we can't use that as an excuse. Many people today uh, do not go from house to house, but we use the, the, the technology, uh, social medias, and other things to share those stories that we shouldn't be sharing with others. Um, gossip always causes conflict. Therefore, Paul encourages young widows to marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully against them, he says that if you have a purpose in life, if you have a role to play, if you have work to do, you won't have time for all of the foolishness of the things of this world. Paul reminds Timothy, some have already turned aside from the faith and have given themselves over to the work of Satan. 
This may refer to um, folks that married unbelievers. It may re refer to folks who, who got caught up in the gossip and, and the slander of others. We're not really sure uh, if, if there was a particular group of people or a subject matter that Paul's talking about, but he's saying there are those that have already left the faith. Be careful not to, to allow the world to draw you away from the things of God. Satan is always looking for an opportunity to draw believers away so that he can slander them and the church for what we are trying to do. Churches may need to help young widows receive the training so that they will be able to receive a good job and continue on. And, and younger widows uh, must be loved and helped by those and not and should not expect this to be a lifetime support from the church. Paul's concern is that the church not be charged with the care of every widow, but just those, as he says in verse 1, those that are widows indeed. All right? Um, so we need to be reminded that, that there, there is a family. Everyone is family. We treat them as family. There are the older widows that we must make sure that are cared for and visited and shared with and loved upon and needs met and yards cleaned when needed, taking care of them. And the younger widows, we need to make sure that we help them get back on their feet and point them in a direction and help them to stay in a direction where they're walking close with the Lord. And Paul's concern here is that, that we make sure that the church does not take on responsibilities that are not theirs. We need to always be listening, always caring, always willing to share the love of Christ and a helping hand. Meeting the needs of others is our obligation as a church. Now listen to what Philippians 2.4 says. I should not only or not look only for my own interests, but also the interest of others. May it be said of us as a church that we don't only look to our own interest, but that we are looking to help others along life's journey. Folks, as we think about what the Apostle Paul says, you may not fit in the category of one of the widows, but you do fit in the category of one of the elders or of the youngers. You fit in the categories of a family member. And therefore, this teaching is for you to look upon your obligation. Listen, my friends, too many of us are saying um, it's the deacon's job or it's the pastor's job. Now, the deacons do have a responsibility for all the families of the church, but that doesn't mean they have to do it all. The pastor has a, a responsibility to oversee and, and, and shepherd the whole flock, but he can't do it all. We need every member to pitch in, everyone to do the part that God has called you to do for the work of his kingdom. May God call you, and then may God show you the very calling that he's calling you to. And may you be found faithful in it so that you will honor the Lord as you live out your life. May God bless you until we meet again.